Hello everyone and welcome to another game from round 5 of the 2019 Tata Steel Chess Tournament. Uh, we said we will cover a game between Samuel Shankland and Ding Liren. Uh, now Ding Liren is, uh, like I always mention, a very very exciting player. He always plays uh, extremely sharp lines and uh, his games are never boring. Even that draw against Magnus Carlsen uh, was a really intense game. Uh, but here he faces uh, Samuel Shankland, who had a phenomenal 2018. Uh, he first won the United States Championship in clear first place uh, ahead of Fabiano Caruana, uh, the World Chess Championship challenger, Hikaru Nakamura and Wesley So. So uh, that in itself is a, a phenomenal feat. Uh, then he won the Capablanca Memorial, uh, again in clear first place. Uh, if you are interested in some extra vast knowledge, uh, the first person to win the Capablanca Memorial in, 18, uh, in 1962 uh, is uh, none other than Miguel Nydorf, and the person who won the Capablanca Memorial uh, the most times is none other than uh, Vasily Ivanchuk. Uh, and also, uh, only a month after winning the Capablanca Memorial, he won the American Continental Championship. So he really won uh, pretty much everything in 2018. Uh, he also broke the, 2000, uh, the 2700 rating barrier. Uh, I believe he's uh, now the... 11th uh, American to do so uh, in, in history, uh, but I'm not sure about that information, but uh, de definitely a very strong player. Uh, but here he faces the monster, he faces King Ding, and uh, well, it's it's just uh, a, an excellent game. So let's uh, uh, check it out. Uh, we have e4 by Shankland, uh, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5, the Rui Lopez. Uh, a6, Morphe's defense, uh, we have bishop to a4, knight to f6, this is all uh, standard theory, we've seen it uh, plenty of times, bishop e7, rook e1, b5, kicking the bishop back, bishop b3, uh, we have castles, and this is, uh, well, a very exciting moment in every Rui Lopez game, uh, will Shanklin go for c3 and allow something like the martial attack, as we all know, uh, Ding Liren, su such a creative player, surely has uh, every line of the martial uh, memorized, uh, but uh, aside from c3, you could go a4 or h3, the so-called anti-martial lines, and uh, Shanklin goes for uh, one such line, that is h3. So we will not be seeing the martial attack, but still, uh, it will be a very exciting game, as you'll see. Bishop b7, uh, d3, d6, d these are all standard uh, moves and standard maneuvers, c3. Knight to a5, push, uh, kicking the bishop back, also making uh, room for this pawn to uh, march forward. We have bishop to c2 and now c5. Uh, knight bd2, uh, white will often go for this maneuver into Rui Lopez. Uh, you you want to go to f1 and then, uh, depending on what black plays, either to e3 or to g3. We have rook to e8, uh, preparing to move the bishop back so the rook can keep uh, an eye on the e5 pawn as well. Uh, and now comes knight to f1. And uh, here, uh, the, this position has been reached so many times, there are over 150 games in the database uh, from uh, high, uh, from, you know, top tier tournaments. Uh, and here, uh, we have h6. Uh, knight to e3, we have bishop back to f8, and here, b4 by Shankland. And uh, this position has been reached uh, only once uh, in history. It was in uh, uh, 1964 uh, in the Baku Championship in a game uh, Rashid Nezmedinov uh, versus Judovic, uh, where Judovic retreated with the knight to c6. Uh, but here Ding goes for c captures on b4, uh, which is uh, the, the better move. Uh, c captures on b4, knight to c6, and now a3 defending the b4 pawn. And now d5 by Ding. As you can see, uh, if you can push d5 without making uh, too many concessions, then you're doing okay with black. Uh, and here you could trade everything. Let's say you go, you could go knight captures, knight captures, pawn captures, captures with the queen. Uh, bishop to b3 attacks the queen, queen goes back, and then bishop to b2. You will have a mighty bishop pair eyeing uh, at the king side here. Uh, but uh, there's no real way for you to increase the pressure against the e5 pawn, so black is perfectly fine here. Uh, it's very unlikely that you will be able to push d4, so it's actually black who decides what uh, what uh, will be played here. Black can go a5 uh, and continue playing on the queen side, black will be perfectly fine here. So Shankland doesn't enjoy this. Uh, instead, we have knight to g4. And okay, uh, Ding uh, takes the opportunity to trade queens as uh, he decides it, it will be in his favor. Knight captures, h captures on g4, d captures, pawn captures, and now trading queens. Queen captures on d1, rook captures, and now a5. Again, the center is uh, very nicely protected, and there is the possibility of rook to d7, but Ding uh, doesn't mind this. He prefers to play on the queen side. 
Uh, as if rook to d7, uh, I, I, there's nothing wrong with this move, but uh, let's say bishop c8 attacking the rook, rook c7, and then knight d4, uh, black can simply trade down, create a passed pawn uh, on d4, and continue play, uh, play on the queen side. Uh, so first we have b captures on a5, knight captures on a5, and now rook to b1, leaving this option open to go to d7, and also the b pawn is now under attack. So how do you prevent both threats, rook captures on b5 and rook to d7? Uh, well, bishop to c6. Uh, seems like a funny looking move, but you know, if it works, why not? Uh, we have bishop to c6, and now uh, it's a very dangerous position for white. Uh, this knight to c4 move is uh, a pretty big deal. Uh, for example, if you try something like bishop to e3, just, uh, you know, control the c5 square, uh, let's say uh, you want to keep on developing, then knight to c4 comes with an attack on the bishop and also with a double attack against the a3 pawn. Uh, you wouldn't really have a, have a way of defending the a3 pawn. Uh, Ding would win a pawn, and then he would have a clear past b pawn, and it would be very hard to stop it uh, with the bishop pair. Uh, so here, after bishop c6, we have knight to d2, controlling the c4 square, uh, rook e to d8, putting pressure along the d file, uh, and now king to f1. You want to bring the king over to help out with the defense as well. Knight b7. Now, remaneuvering the knight, but also opening up now a second double attack uh, with the rook and the bishop uh, against the a3 pawn. Rook b3, defending the pawn. Uh, and now, it seems that white has everything defended, uh, but everything is not so simple. Here, Ding uh, uses uh, you know a sequence of very precise moves to create a powerful attack. So, uh, you know, just check out this position. You don't have to pause the video or find any... Uh, moves, but, uh, you know, just uh, try to soak up the position and try to figure out a plan with the black pieces, as uh, the one being played is really just uh, phenomenal. Uh, so, if you did it, you know, congratulations for, for the effort. Uh, Ding goes bishop to d7. He wants to play rook a to c8, bring this rook over to the c file as the bishop on c2 is undefended. Uh, but he wants to do it without wasting time. So first he goes bishop to d7, attacks the undefended pawn on g4. Uh, Shanklin defends it, we have f3, and now rook a to c8, attacking the bishop on c2. Uh, you don't really have a good way of defending the bishop. Uh, if, you, if you move it, uh, then uh, the bishop on c1 will become a bit vulnerable. Uh, so here we have bishop to b1, uh, trying to e <laughs> do it this way, uh, but now there's a different problem. Uh, now uh, the two rooks are uh, awkwardly placed on light squares. So here, uh, I did give you a, a bit of a hint, but feel free to pause the video here and try to find the move that now really... Uh, well, it, it's it's a winning move for black, so we can even call it that. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. Uh, it's a really, really a wonderful idea. And for those of you uh, who just want to enjoy the show for whatever reason, uh, B4. Uh, we already mentioned the, the rooks are very awkwardly placed on light squares. You want to create room for this bishop, so bishop to a4 is a huge threat here. Uh, there's no real way to stop it other than moving rooks, so you do want to move the rook. This is what Shanklin played, rook to b2, but now bishop to a4, uh, you know, ju uh, just as well. Attacking the rook, you have to move the rook, rook to e1, and now rook to c7. Uh, a huge threat is now rook d to c8, doubling up. Uh, for example, if you play a captures uh, on b4, rook d to c8, and you cannot prevent rook captures on c1. Uh, the bishop on c1 is only guarded once by the rook on e1. There's no way to move the bishop. There's no way to add additional protection to the bishop, so you lose a piece here. Uh, so instead, uh, Shanklin tried bishop to a2, and it seems that... Uh, Ding trusted him. Uh, well, not really. I mean, uh, Ding played B captures uh, on A3. Uh, but still, Rook D to C8 is just as winning. Uh, perhaps uh, perhaps Ding did trust Shankland, thinking that now, okay, you can now, you've uh, freed up uh, some space for the Rook on B1, but still, Rook B1 loses the Bishop to C2. You have to move the Rook. Now comes Bishop to D3 check. Uh, once you move the King, you get Bishop to C5 check. You move the King again, and now you get Bishop to D4, and black is lo white is lost. Uh, the Rook is trapped. Uh, once you grab the Rook, you're also going to lose the Bishop on C1, so a completely winning position for Ding. Uh, but okay, Ding uh, finds also a, different, uh, a nice idea. B captures on A3, it comes with an attack on the Rook. 
rook to b6, uh, but now bishop to c5. Again, bringing this bishop into the game with tempo with an attack against the rook. Uh, and now this maneuver bishop c2 to d3 will be deadly. Uh, rook has to go back. There aren't all that many squares for the rook. Uh, rook to b1 was played. And after bishop to c2, uh, it was in this position on move 33 that Samuel Shankland resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Uh, well, your rook is under attack. You don't really have uh, any squares where you can put the rook. You can put the rook on b5, but if rook b5, then bishop d3. Uh, very awkward. Uh, well, uh, your king has nowhere to go. You have to block, and then you can capture either rooks. You can capture first this one, and still this rook will be pinned. Uh, or uh, we've already shown if you go to a1, then bishop to d4 is deadly. Or bishop d3 first. You have to block with the rook, and then bishop d4. Again, you can capture this rook, then capture the bishop, it's unguarded, will be unguarded, this rook is still pinned, uh, a complete meltdown uh, for, uh, you know, the leader of the white pieces, Samuel Shankland. Uh, so yeah, I mean... It's uh, it's a Rui Lopez, uh, you know, not not every day will a game that uh, comes from a Rui Lopez be a very exciting game, and I think this is a very exciting game. Uh, it's not exciting like uh, I don't know maybe uh, Kramnik versus uh, Arunian versus Kramnik in the candidates uh, where that uh, G5 idea in the Berlin was uh, used, but uh, still, I mean. Uh, I, I thought it was very nice. So I do hope you enjoyed it. And before I forget, uh, I did prepare the final, not the final, but the standings after round five. So as you can see, with this win, uh, Ding Liren is tied for first place with uh, Jan Nepomniachtchi. Uh, then we have uh, tied for second four players, Magnus Carlsen, uh, Vidit Gujarati, Anish Giri, and Vishwanathan Anand. Uh, then three players with two and a half points, Shahrir Mamedyarov, Jan Krzysztof Duda, and Timur Rajabov. Uh, then we have three players with two points, Vladimir Ferosev, Richard Rapport, and Samuel Shankland after this loss. Uh, Vladimir Kramnik, uh, Big Vlad, definitely not having the greatest tournament, but it's still early. Uh, he, he did have uh, two losses, one and a half out of five, and uh, Jordan Van Forest, uh, one out of five. And I did uh, mess up in the previous video. I said he had two draws, but actually he had one win against Jan Krzysztof Duda. So uh, apologies to, to Van Forest uh, for that. Uh, but yeah, a nice game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Marian Kolev, um, Juan Salirosas, uh, Adam Derlezinski, uh, Bobby Treat, and Iris, Ari Steele for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, uh, and I will see you soon. Uh, today is a rest day, so no Tata Steel tournament games today. They are continuing tomorrow, so we are continuing the Capablanca saga and the 1911 San Sebastian tournament. Uh, thank you all, and I'll see you soon.